All right, now we're going to 5 1. Now what's 5 1 title? Well, they start showing that symbol and stuff. But I want to, I know, before we just rush into it. Everyone, before we rush into this, before we rush into this, now, Rand, you're very familiar with that. Before I rush into that notation, we've got to build on things. So we're going to build on this concept of what we're finding. So, we're going to find, at least estimate, area under curves. And we're going to use rectangles. We're going to build rectangles. Now, everyone, it's not going to be perfect, is it? Rectangles have these flat tops and curves do what? Curves. So we'll just, it's going to be, you know, approximate. Does that sound good? So it may look goofy at first. But I think a lot of you theoretically will think, well, if you do more and more of these rectangles, you can get closer and closer to the actual answer. So we'll start with something very simple. How about uh, y equals x squared? We're all familiar with that, right? Okay. So this is in 5-1. A lot of us are familiar with y of x squared. And then I'll start throwing down that integral symbol that you talked about, Valorize. We'll put that down at the end. See how that's related. Alright, so there's a connection between these antiderivatives and area under curves. There's a connection. Right? Now with derivatives, we said that represented the slope of a tangent line to a curve, right? Mm -hmm. Well, now you're going to see a connection between this and the area underneath curves. Well, let's see. Let's just start with this guy. Uh, let's just look at a picture of this. Or isn't that a parabola? I think I'll just start at zero. I mean, I think I'll go out to uh, four. Does that sound good? One, two, three, four. Now at one, how high does it get? One. So when I just go up one here. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And when I scaled my uh, my y-axis, you know, different from my x-axis, but there's the y value, so it's 16. Well, 1 it's 1, right? Parabola. What's 2 squared? 4. 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. It's curving. What's 3 squared? And 4 squared? 16. All right. Well, there's the curve. What we're going to do is, we're going to estimate the area under this curve. Uh, now they call this a Riemann sum. I want to make sure the first section where you start mentioning the name. Yep. And when we're going to build rectangles. Now the word rectangle starts with what letter? R. R. So when you hear Riemann sum, would you think rectangle? You're drawing what? Rectangles? I know this is calculus one, but when you're in calculus three, when you hear the word Riemann, would you think what? Rectangle? Mm -hmm. Now it's going to be three-dimensional, so they'd be rectangular prisms. Mm -hmm. You build rectangular prisms to estimate the area under some surface that went like this. Like some big wave. Like some wave, some surface went like that. But it's still, you're going to build rectangular prisms or solids underneath it to estimate the volume. Well, here, we're going to estimate the area. Now, what's one way to do it? One way to do it, everyone, is using the left side of rectangles. I'm just going to take, like, subdivisions in here. Let's say they said use... Four subdivisions. Okay. Now I'm looking at this image, everyone. I can do a subdivision from here to here. That'd be one subdivision. I'll build a rectangle there. I can build a subdivision from here to here. A subdivision from there to there, and a subdivision from there to there. Everyone see the four subdivisions we can use? Mm -hmm. And we'll build how many rectangles? Four. four rectangles. Okay. Now I do want to point out this, because a lot of you are good at this. What if they said n equal to 8? Then he wants you to build how many rectangles? 
Eight. Eight. So where do you think the width of each rectangle would be? Right now, the width obviously is going to be a width of one. What would be the width of every rectangle? Point five. Point five. Very good. You all, do you all see that? Mm -hmm. You'd be like, oh, you got one arrow, one arrow, one arrow, one arrow. So you follow me? So it does get tedious, but we're not going to get into the ones where you got to like do a thousand of them. I mean, we'll use technology like Microsoft Excel or something. Just sum them all. But now we're just going to do four rectangles. Now, I build rectangles. Like, but when I build this, you know, should I go up here and stop and cut it over? Or should I take this side of this subdivision? We all know what a rectangle looks like, right? Mm -hmm. Should I go to this side, the right side, and should I build the height? Yeah. Stop here, hit the curve, cut over like that. No matter what, everyone, I'm always going to stop when I hit the curve. Mm -hmm. But we got to talk about, are you using the left side of your subdivision or the right side? So they have to tell you that. So our first problem is called a left Riemann sum. All right? Now, the author writes it like this, but not every textbook does it. All right? That wouldn't be acceptable like, uh, am I familiar with those AP exams? They couldn't write that because they know that, hey, not every student taking the AP exam would be familiar with L sub 4. But L sub 4 in your textbook represents a Riemann sum. You're going to build how many rectangles? Four. Four rectangles, then you're going to add up all four areas. And the L is going to stand for which side? Left. Left side. All right, but let me write it down. This is called a what? A left Riemann sum. And what are we trying to do? We're trying to estimate the area under the what? Curve. Curve. Yeah. There's going to be some error, though. Do you agree? Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. We're like big time. Well, can we start on this one? Uh -huh. Sam, so I'm going to start over here. Now, which side am I using? The three or the four? Left. So three. Left. So left. So go, and we're going to left. Now, when am I going to stop? When I hit the curve. So watch. Stop. Stop. Now, cut over. Cut over that region. Isn't there something like L to something 4 in the calculator or something? Yep. You don't like that? Uh -huh. You can shade it too if you want. Uh, obviously, this thing is going to be grossly underestimated, isn't it? Do you all have a sense of that? Does everyone agree? Good. Hey, that'll be asked during the test. Like, hey, is this going to be an overestimation or an underestimation? Can you tell? This is going to be a what? Mm -hmm. Underestimated. We're missing a little. Look at all that we're missing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me keep going. Build this one. Which side? Two. Two. Yep, I start left. I go up to the curve. When I stop, I'm going to what? Stop it. Cut it. Side by side. Do one here. Mm -hmm. Now you're probably wondering, why did Professor Messenger start with left? Because something weird happens right here. You can't do anything. You, you try to build your rectangle. You said the rule is left side. OK, go to here. We're going to draw it. We're going to stop and we hit the curve. Watch me do it. Ready? Go. Oh. Do it. I can't, right? What's the height of this rectangle? Zero. Zero. So that, that rectangle's area is going to be zero. So sometimes that happens, okay? I don't want to freak you out. Or here, better, better yet. What if this curve went underneath here? I will still build a rectangle, but I'm going to go down to when I hit the curve. Mm -hmm. I will. And you go, but won't that give like negative values for the height? It sure will. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. You go, what if it goes underneath? Yep. Wouldn't that be negative y values? Do you do absolute value? If the question was find the area, but when they say with integrals, we're going to notice integrals finds net area. So we subtract. Got it. Yeah. Are you ready? Let's get the area of these rectangles and add them up. Now, what's the formula of area rectangle length times what? Width. All right, so when it looks like I need an L times W plus an L times W. Plus an L times W, plus a L times W. And this will give me an estimate of the area of the curve. Mm -hmm. Now, here, your rectangle one, rectangle two, rectangle three. Maybe I should draw them in here. And where's rectangle one? Mm -hmm. uh, you don't exist, do you? So in, what was rectangle one's area? Zero. I know. Uh, or I should write it like this. It had a width. The width was one. But what was the length? Zero. Zero. Does anyone see that? Now, what's the length and width of part one? 
Uh, one. I mean, of Roman numeral two. So the length. How about the width is still just what one? But the length is. I'm stuck. How do we get that length? This can happen. How do we get that length? Oh, so you have to do like x squared of one and x squared. I would have to plug that number into there. Yeah. Does that one agree? Mm -hmm. Look at this. Hey, what's the width? I can see it's one. How do I get that length of that rectangle though? You're gonna have to look at that number and then substitute into this equation to get its y value. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So when this is a width of one. In fact, this width will be one. This width will be one. But help me get all these l's here. What's this length? Um, one squared, which is one. What's the next length going to be? Two squared, four. Two squared. Everyone see that? Four. Now you can write, we're all right as two squared, so everyone knows where I'm getting these fours from. And what's this last length? Nine. Two squared. Yeah. All right, now I'll squiggle. <laughs> what's the approximate area? One plus four plus nine, so that's 14. 14. Everyone, if we did inches, we'd say 14 inches squared. Right? Mm -hmm. Did you agree? If it was uh, centimeters, okay, 14 centimeters squared. It's not the exact area, but it's what? Approximately the area. Now, Evan, what if I followed this up on the test with this? Part B. Is this an overestimation or underestimation? Under. And you see how you really got to kind of draw the picture to find out? Does that make sense? Cool. Oh, yeah, hey, sometimes on the final exam, you know what I'd like to use multiple choice problems? I might just have an image like this. I just have a curve that went like that. And on the other side, I have a curve that go like this. And I say, hey, in which one of these would a left Riemann sum provide an underestimation? Now, how are you going to figure out that answer? Good you're not going to guess. No, you're not going to guess. You're probably going to draw a little what? Rectangles, right? Now, there's no markings here, but that's OK. You would sit in here and do what? You'd sit here and go, well, let me just think about it. If I did the left rim on sum, I'd sit here and do what? Left side, left side, left side, left side. Do you follow me? Mm -hmm. And you would see which one is the what? Underestimation. See, what would happen if I did left sides on this thing? Well, look what happens. Left side, left side. Overestimation. So which one? Am I, which one's the underestimation? Does that make sense? I like to do that in the final. So I want to make sure you go, oh, I'm just going to build a little right. If he says left, I'll build from the left side. If he says right, I'll build from the right, I'll see which one is underestimated. So we can conclude that if the curve is increasing, that's underestimation, and it's decreasing yes, over. Yes, you got it. Uh, it's like your own, I, I love it. You're coming up with your own theorems now. <laughs> like your brain's, like you're thinking about like, well, I guess I can't say theorem hasn't been proven yet, but you got what, some... Some really good what conjectures going on. Educated guesses. You're going. Wait a minute. I bet you the graph's always increasing. concave up and increasing. Then the left rim on sum will be a uh, underestimation. Under, yeah, yeah. That is exactly it. If oh, ready, if the graph is continuous or the function's continuous, you know we got to always <laughs> put that in there. You got it. Hey, uh, now in the same problem, everyone. You see all this junk in here? I'm going to put something down. An integral symbol. I want to show you what this means. So we get used to this. Integral. Got enough room right here. Let's say this was, I don't know, R of t. Let's say that was the R of t, that function right there. And what was R of t equal to? What equation? X squared. R of t, whatever, t, t, t squared, right? T squared, yeah. Don't see that? Well, then here, which is x squared, right? Mm -hmm. T squared. Now, what letter did I just use? T? So rather than dx, here I would write dt. I can't say this equals this number, but I could say roughly, right? Now, I want to show you something. You're going, hold up. Where's the t cubed plus t cubed over 3 plus c thing, right? That's coming about. We'll talk about that later, the connection. But what I'm saying, this represents, down here at the lower limit, I can say where we started. What was the initial value there? Yeah. Zero. Yeah. That's t equal to zero. And then at this top, I can put this number. Where did we stop? Four. 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 
So let, listen to this language that's called a definite integral. The definite integral from t equals 0 to t equals 4 of t squared, right, dt with respect to t, is roughly around 14. But it's not the best estimate because I can tell it's an underestimate. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. So on that note, let's do a right three months on. And then again, I want you to do an equal to 4 subdivision. So uh, how does the author write that? R with a what? Four. But that means what kind of sum? A right Riemann sum. Well, then would you try it? And then I'll be curious, is it going to be an overestimation or an underestimation? Well, it's going to be 4LW's degree. Okay. True? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, but I have to draw an entirely new picture. I have to erase this. Sorry. Now, on that time I started from the right, I'm going to start from the left this time. I'm doing a right wing on some. Which side of the subdivision are you using? Why are you starting from I can start on either side. Uh, professor. Just one question. If we do a left uh, Riemann sum from left, could you do overestimate? Can you do that also? Let's see. Could, it, could a left Riemann sum be overestimated? Yeah, I think if it's concave down. Okay. Do you agree? Okay. If a graph was concave down, do you agree if it, con if it was like oh, this? Oh, yeah, yeah. Then, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you tell? Uh huh. Wait. Hmm. Left Riemann sum. It would still be underestimated, uh, still be underestimated. but it'd have to be what? It had the function would have to be what? Decreasing? Decreasing, yeah. That's it. That's it. It would just have to be decreasing. Very good. I was thinking, I get down, I start jumping. I go, wait a minute, no, that's still going to be an underestimation. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone.